Today, I'm going to show you how to get the best results with Midjourney AI. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? My name is Olivio. I'm a professional artist. Let's get started. So in this video, I want to go from the most fun to the most detailed. Now, if you want to know how to sign up to midjourney.com, that is more to the end of the video. I have an index below in the video description to guide you through the video. Also, don't miss my live stream this Sunday where I will use Midjourney AI and Affinity Photo to create a beautiful new artwork, show you a lot more tips and tricks. And of course, you can ask me questions in the chat. Now, here is how you get really amazing results right from the start. The cool thing is right now with Midjourney, all of the prompts are shared with the images right here. So you can click on an image and you can see what the artist has written and suggested to the AI for getting this result. But also you can click down here to see what the parent image was, where this came from. And you can go deeper and deeper through this to see the different iterations of that artwork. That is already pretty helpful, but there is more here that you can use. You have these three little dots here. When you click on them, you can copy the prompt, but you can also copy the command. The prompt is only the words you're seeing here, but the command has a lot more details, like for example, the ratio, the quality and other settings that we are not seeing here. So if you want to play around with this, you probably want to copy the command, not the prompt. Another thing you can learn from these prompts is what kind of terms are used in here, because Midjourney AI is very understanding to a lot of different terms that you should play with. So for example, in here, when we look at that, you can see it says character design, it says photorealistic, it says octane render. This is kind of a 3D rendering method. It says Unreal Engine. This is kind of a gaming engine, but it's also used for 3D art. It says volumetric light. Now volumetric light is, for example, if you look at clouds or if you look at smoke and you see the clouds that they are 3D and the light is shining through them, that is volumetric light. It's a light that shows you the volume of an object. So you want to figure out a lot of these technical terms that are used in the art world because the AI actually understands them. So when we look here at this artwork, you can see that we do have volumetric light in here. Let's look at some other artworks here and the words here that are used. So in this case, we have Game of Thrones, but we also have manga. That is the style, as you can see here. But we also have cover in here. It's a manga cover, not just a manga. The AI understands what that means and creates different styles from that. If you write manga or manga cover, because the cover is a different way to have the composition, to create the style, to present something. And the AI knows that. So if you want to get certain compositions, certain styles, you need to use these words. Pretty important. Another thing we see here is it says by Akira Toriyama. So you can enter famous artists and it will try to create something in that style. Now, of course, that style isn't 100 percent like that artist, but it is trying to get close to that so you can play around with these styles and see what they create for you. By the way, if you're thinking right now, well, this is stealing from artists, not really. First of all, you are creating a variation, a new artwork, but in the style, which you can also do if you can draw good enough. Nobody keeps you from creating style in the way of another artist. But also, I know personally a lot of artists and designers and almost all of them have been super excited about this technology and about the possibilities of that, because now they can prototype really fast. They can try and play with a lot of styles. I talked with different artists and they said the AI comes up with things I would have never thought about. So this is giving me ideas, inspirations. It's going in a different way than a human would think because we are limited by our life inspirations, by our perspectives by the way we go about creating art, but the AI is not. So actually, artists are really loving this. Let's go back here and look at some other examples. You can see it says 
ink drawing. Think about what you want to create. The different style, the epoch, the artist, also the material. Is the ink painting on paper? Is it on parchment? Is it on leather? Is it on metal? Is it on stone? What kind of background does it have? So think about these terms. That is pretty important to get the right results. In this case, you can see that we have a work that is more on paper with ink. You also have these nice highlights. So also the AI will fill in a lot of artistic styles for you and artistic methods, which is really impressive that the AI understands how to apply these methods to the images. Other things you can see here in this description is intricate. That is important to get more detail. It says splash of ink, also important for the art style and how this is put onto the paper. And 8K is something you can use to get more or less detail. It has nothing to do with the image resolution. You can, for example, also write full HD or 4K or super resolution. You need to think about all these different terms, read about them. And the best way to learn about them is to just look in the community feed and see what kind of words people are using. Here's another very impressive artwork. This is something that the Midjourney AI can do very well. These kind of rotten surfaces, corpses and skeletons and bone and these kind of things. It does really, really well. Another thing, by the way, you will see here and you will find often with Midjourney is that the details look like they are real, like you think you see roses, but they are not actually roses. You can see from the inside, from the way that the petals of these blossoms are formed. Not a rose, but it feels like a rose. It looks like a rose. This is also what artists and also myself enjoy a lot about this because at the same time it is realistic and you can play with a lot of things, but also it feels like a dream. It is surreal. It is otherworldly. It's very inspirational because if it, if it would be exactly real and perfect as you imagine it, it, you would lose all of the inspiration at that moment, I think. But let's go back here to the description. There's a lot of style terms too. For example, you have here Giger as the artist, you have Baroque, you have Art Nouveau, you have James Jean, also 3D S Max plus V Ray. So you have different kind of technologies for rendering. It says extremely detailed and intricate center composition, also very interesting. Uh, elegant, also a nice term in here. Extremely sharp lines, extremely contrast. So you can see from that. You can stack up all these terms and the AI will figure out for you what to do. Now, here is something that I want to suggest to you. Write these keywords, write these terms from the most important, from the biggest part of the artistic thought to the smaller details. So start big and then go smaller and smaller and smaller with the description. So it's really good that here at the beginning it says skull made of roses and then you come to other details. Another thing you can see in here right away is that the AI can create all kinds of interesting styles for you. A lot of that is inspired by how concept art drawings look. If you go to DeviantArt, if you go to ArtStation, you will see a lot of that. And you can actually use that as a term. So you can say style of art station, style of deviant art, and it will give you an approximation of that kind of style you find often there. But also you have these kind of 3D rendering looking images, which is amazing again. And you also can have these kind of ink sketches. For example, in this case, the prompt says Leonardo da Vinci's technical sketch of a robotic dinosaur highly detailed. So this not only will take the style of the artist Leonardo da Vinci, but also the technical style of these ages with the ink, with the paper in the way it has been created in the past. Here we have another very impressive work. And when you look down at the description, it says multicolor crystal octopus statue. It's important to think about what we actually want to have, because if this would be multicolored crystal octopus without the statue, the AI would create something different for you because it would think, well, you want to have a, an alive octopus that is maybe made out of crystal or holding crystal or is in between crystals. Also, you need to think about these kind of words to describe it as well as possible for the AI. Now, at this point, I also want to say that 
less is sometimes more with the mid-journey AI. So don't write a full page description what you want to have. Keep it short, but bring in the most important details you want to have. And often you have to enter it multiple times to get a lot of variations until you get what you want to see. Because this, and this is also very important to understand, mid-journey AI is experimental and it will give you kind of random results. It will try to figure out what you mean with your prompt, but still it will create variations. And afterwards, you cannot add to these variations. Another thing that Midjourney AI is really good at are these schematics or notebook pages or blueprints and they will also have fake text in them. There is no text, you can't read it, but it looks like text. It gives you these kind of legends on the side, these kind of icons and descriptions and little sample stuff like that. You can create this for any kind of technology, for any kind of epoch. So you can say Middle Ages or sci-fi or Leonardo da Vinci or any kind of other style, and it will create stuff like that also from different cultures, Japanese style, American style, all these kind of things on how these sketches blueprints would look. So that's really, really amazing. So the community feed has a lot of inspirations in here. And I want to invite you to play with these commands here, with these prompts here, take notes on what is used here as terms and learn from that what kind of style you want to create and what kind of words work best for you. A last thing before we go more technical is the ratio of the image because that has a tremendous impact on what you're getting as a result. So for example, you can see here we have a vertical design of a room and of course this will show you a different composition than when we have a horizontal design of a room. So the layout, the composition, the way the scene is built up and the way the scene is filled with objects and all kinds of scenery maybe people also is very dependent on what kind of ratio you are looking for. So when you don't get the result you want and it doesn't look as you imagine it should be, try a different ratio and you can maybe get other results. This also is especially interesting with portraits. For example, if you have a square portrait, often it is zoomed in rather close. But if you have something like 9 by 16, which is horizontal and rather long, you might get the upper body or you might get a full body portrait. You also, of course, can write that into the text. Also, when you describe different scenes. So for example, here I have described I wanted to have a scene of Berlin after World War II as a photograph. And this actually not just made the scene, it also made it in the style of the photography, it made it in black and white. It tried to figure out the style of the building back there. You also see bombed and broken buildings here on the side and soldiers on the road here. So all of that is pretty amazing. And it again has to do a lot with the ratio, but also with the style you describe, the epoch, the kind of scene you want to have, all these kind of things. Here's another example of a schematic for a cyborg robot made with ink on paper. So this again is really impressive. And the good thing is with these artistic styles where you don't really have a real reference to anything, they look basically perfect because you couldn't say, well, this detail is right or wrong. And what also is very enjoyable, and this is again really inspirational and amazing for artists, is the way the AI finds solutions to how it is drawing. It uses classic methods you find in art, like for example, down here where you have a bright edge next to a dark edge. So there's a shadow down here just to highlight the bright edge. Also down here, the same kind of trick, but also how it is using highlights and white and other kind of artistic tricks to make this look a lot more amazing. So you can learn a lot from that and then just bring this over into your own art program and paint over it, create your own style with it or just stay with this. This is a really amazing tool. Here is another thing you can do with that. And this is prototype actual products in the real world. For example, here we have a Fox design made out of paper. So you can get inspired by this. It looks pretty photorealistic and you can afterwards just build this if you want to in real life, but you can get 
a hundred variations from mid journey just by entering different prompts, trying different ideas. Is that this is super inspirational for artists. Now let's go to the more technical part about how to get started, because this seems to confuse a lot of people. First of all, what you need is a Discord account. Discord is free. It is a page where you can chat with other people. Originally it was planned for gaming, but now it is used for a lot of other things. You can use Discord in your browser. You can download it as a software to your computer. You can also use it on your smartphone, which is brilliant because this means you can interact with the AI even when you're out on the road. If you have an idea on a party or on a walk, you can just enter it to the AI and it will create it for you on the fly. It's really, really amazing. Now, I have an invite link for you under this video for the Midjourney Discord server. You need to join that to use the service. I would suggest to you to sign up to this rather quickly because the server is filling up to its maximum capacity. Yesterday, there was a conference with the founder of Midjourney and he said we are reaching the limits of what this server can take. Not the AI, but the server. So after you have joined this for the first time, on the left side here you see different rooms in that chat server. One is called trial support. Go in there and ask all kinds of questions you have about the AI, about the service. And when you want to try this, at first you get 25 images you can try. You have to go into one of these newbie rooms here and there you can try this out. Now the way this works is down here on the bottom you have your text bar where you enter your chat messages. To write anything to the AI what you need to do is to first write a slash and then choose imagine here or write imagine and hit enter and this will create this prompt here which has a blue circle around it in a little box you need to write inside of that box whatever you want to have from the ai then hit enter and this is sent off to the ai now because you are in a room with a lot of other people this is going to be rather confusing because these messages are running very fast and you have to search for your message by scrolling scrolling through that chat. Your message will be having a little bit of an orange background so you can find it a bit easier, but still it's a bit messy. Now, when you sign up to the subscription, you get a private room with the AI where you can chat with Midjourney on your own, no other input in there. So this will become very organized and very easy to use. And here is another thing I want to suggest to you. There's two different forms of subscription. One is $10 per month and gives you 200 minutes. And I can guarantee you, you will use up these 200 minutes probably in your first night or in the first weekend, and then it's gone and you have to wait for another month. So personally, I want to suggest to you to use the $30 per month subscription. I know that is a lot of money and this doesn't even yet include the taxes and fees for the payment, but with the $30 subscription, you can use relax mode and this gives you unlimited images. You can create as much as you want. And I have created well over 1,500 images so far. I've used this for a couple of days. This, I have to tell you, is super addictive. I spent whole days, whole nights, hours upon hours just trying and playing with the AI, also sitting here with friends who have also been amazed and try out all kinds of things. Now, the first thing I want you to do when you enter this chat here is to go down here, write slash help, enter, and then you get this message here. This has a lot of very useful links in here. The most useful here is this link to the user manual, which will describe to you how the prompts work, what they do and how to use the Midjourney AI on Discord. Now, of course, in this video, I'm also going to explain to you how stuff like that works. So you have a better understanding because the manual is not bad, but is kind of cryptic sometimes. So let's go over the most important things because I have another link for you in the video description that goes right to this page here. Someone has taken the time to experiment a lot with Midjourney and show the results of the experimentation here. And that is absolutely amazing. So let's go here for the summary first, because this has some of the 
key commands you will be using with Midjourney AI. First of all, we have quality. Now quality defines how much time the AI spends on your image and you have these fixed values here. You can go from 0 0.25 to 0 0.512 Two, and five is turned off right now because it's just too many people using Midjourney at the moment. Now, personally, I think that 0 0.5 gives you a completely different art style than one. So it is not a quick and cheap preview for your artwork. So I would only use this if you want to have this kind of reduced style, not to save on time because when you compare these two, they look completely different. This is one, this is 0 0.25. So this is about the quality. Now let's go over to stylize. This is a little bit confusing. What does stylize do? A lot of people think that this is about the artistic style that is used in the work, but actually well, kind of, but it does a lot more than that. So we have here again, fixed values you can use. These are not floating numbers. You cannot just write 1,500. It's not working like that, but you can make this shorter. You don't have to write minus minus stylized. You can just write minus minus S. So 625 is the AI being hands off. So it will stick as close as possible to the prompt, to the text that you have entered. Also, if you have provided an image link to a source image that you like, you can use any kind of image link from the internet. You can also upload an image to the chat room and then link this in the text. This will try to stick very close to that image. Of course, this is not like you upload an image and then you get four variations exactly of this image. The AI will still loosely base the creation on that image, but still look very different. They do this for copyright reasons. So don't expect that you can just create variations of an artwork you like. Now, when we look at 625, 5,000 and 60,000, for the sample images, you can see that artistically the 625 is a little bit reduced. It sticks very close to what you suggested in the prompt and it sticks very close to the images that you have linked. When we go to 5000, you can also see that this is more playful with the image you provided with what you write in the prompt and also the variations between these images are bigger. This is also what Stylize is doing. The variation distance is much further. Now we go to 60,000. This is already pretty chaotic. So this will be very loose with what you have suggested in the prompt, very loose with what you have linked as images and also very experimental with the different variations here. So you can see these are completely different artworks while these are rather close together from the style and the idea. So this is what Stylize is about. You can, of course, also combine both of them. So here we have quality and stylize option together in one prompt. So the way you would use this is that you write minus minus Q space, then two, another space minus minus S, and then for example, 625. So this is how you add this. And you always have these kind of inputs at the end of your prompt. So you would write everything else before that doc with a hat. And when you want to have ratio in there, you would also write minus minus AR. And then let's say 16 by nine another space and then this comes behind that. So these kind of commands always come at the end of your prompts. So you can see here in combination with these two that again, we have a lot more detail on the higher quality and we have a lot more variation on the higher style number. So when you compare, for example, quality two with style 625 to quality two with style 60,000, you can see that 60,000 takes a lot of artistic freedom. Again, the quality is high, but now when we go to quality 0 0.25 with 60,000, 
lots of variation, very little detail. Another element that is very important in your prompts is the weight of the prompts. You can leave it to the AI to figure out which is more or less important and do random results, but you can also influence the results of the AI by weighting your keywords. Now here's how that works. For example, you would say doc and then colon colon and write a number like let's say three and then make a space and write garden and colon colon and afterwards one. Now what the AI does is it makes a sum of the numbers and then weights the ratio of them. So these are not absolute numbers, they are relative numbers. What I mean by that is I have garden at one right now and dog at three. So the dog is three times more important than the garden. But now if I have the dog at six and I have the garden at three, you can see that the dog now is only twice as important as the garden. So we also see this down here in these examples where one of the words is sphere, the other one is cube, and you see the different weights and how they influence the image. So you can see here when we have zero cube and two sphere, it is mostly spherical, of course, but when we have zero sphere and two cube, it is mostly cubic. Now, the interesting thing you can also do with weights is you can put them into a negative value. You can write minus 0 0.5, minus 1, minus 2, and this will reduce the impact of that element in your image. Here I have an example that I have created. Here we see that the skyscraper has a high weight and the park has a low weight. So we see a little bit of park down here, but we see the skyscrapers very much. Now here the park has a high weight and the skyscrapers have a low weight. So you can see a lot of park with a lot of detail and then some skyscrapers in the distance of the image. So this has a lot of impact. Here are some other things you should experiment with. For example, you can write male portrait by Giger and it will create that kind of style. You can see here we have Van Gogh, Picasso, Andy Warhol and Giger. You can try out all kinds of other artists you know and you can also combine them in different kind of styles or even write multiple names and see what the AI is doing with that. Here we have different artistic techniques for a landscape. So you can see that the oil paint, of course, looks very different than the watercolor or the lino cut or the etching artwork. So this will have a lot of impact on what kind of result you get. And by experimenting with that, you can get truly amazing art styles. Another thing that is interesting for the AI is the different kind of render modes you want to have. For example, Octane render is a method for 3D rendering that is rather realistic but also has a certain style to it. So you can see this here in the image with the light, with the colors, with the reflection on how the image looks. In the middle you have a 2D design and that works pretty good and you get different kind of 2D. Of course, again, you can write the style, you can write the culture, you can write the artist or the time, for example, 80s style, 60s style, all these kind of things to get different kind of 2D art, different kind of like manga, anime, comic book, all these kind of styles. On the right, we have isometric. I didn't really have too much luck with that. It sometimes works, sometimes not. You have to play around with different words, isometric, 2.5D, stuff like that to see if you can get results like that too. But potentially this is also possible. Another thing you should try is to describe the face you want to see or give the name of a person. For example, here I made a version of the actress Zendaya as the goddess of love in a Roman style with the artistic style of Alma Tadema. I still had to do a lot of experimentation to get this image, but I feel like the result is pretty awesome. It doesn't look exactly like her. And also what you can see here is that the Mind Journey AI is really bad with hands or feet. So ideally try to not have them in your composition, but also the AI will improve over time.
Now, especially for the faces, if you don't describe them at all, you often get a very similar looking face that has been called mid journey girl. This is kind of a medium of beauty standard of what we expect of what people rate high when they get these kind of results. And this is kind of the face you most often get. So to get away from these kind of standard mid journey faces, describe the face in certain kind of ways. What kind of culture, what kind of age, what kind of characteristics does the face have? Is it an older or a younger person? How does the haircut look like? Does the person have glasses? Does the face have freckles? Is the skin tanned? Is it a person from Asia or Africa or the Americas or Europe? What is the background of the person? Write a little bit about that so you get a variation of faces or write a famous person and then create variations on top of that. Another thing that gives you amazing results and I really love to play with is to just combine any kinds of words, any kind of things that could sound interesting. For example, here I wrote hyperrealistic insanity and it created this picture here, which I find amazing from the art style, but it also created this image here which again is really beautiful. And this is the exact same prompt. I simply wrote hyper realistic insanity and you get these high variations in there. Let's go even deeper into the rabbit hole and here things become really, really amazing. So for the page that I've linked for you, you also have the style pages. You click on them and there is a list in here of all kinds of things for the cameras, colors, computer displays, this dimensionality, geometry, lightning, materials, all kinds of things. And you can click on them and then find subcategories for that. For example, camera and scene. And here you have photography, filmic, cinematic, dramatic, glamour shot, golden hour. These are words you can use in your prompts. And this shows in the comparison of the spheres, the difference between these different styles. You can also go with different kinds of cameras here. For example, you can have a camcorder, DSLR, night vision, GoPro video, drone photography, and all these kind of other variations in here. Now, when we go over here, you can also experiment, of course, with colors like white, black, brown, dark gray, stuff like that, and get beautiful variations of that. But you can also play with extended colors like beige, scarlet, olive green, aqua, stuff like that. So be creative with the words, but also have a good artistic understanding of the artistic lingo and of the words that are used in the industry. When we go over here, you can also work with different palettes warm color palette, cool color palette, rainbow, colorful, spectral color. Of course, monochromatic colors are also in here. High contrast, low contrast. Next, we have types of light. This is amazing and brings a lot of really high quality to your renders. Things like spotlight, floodlight, backlight, rim light, mark you, strobe light, and all these kind of different artistic words. Crepuscular rays, for example, this is the kind of sun rays you see when the sun breaks through water or through clouds and you get these nice rays in the sky or in the water. Things that I have a lot of success with are these kind of words like cinematic, moody, studio, accent lighting, hard lighting, soft lighting, these kind of different words. Also volumetric light, global illumination. So there is a lot of amazing words that you can use. Another thing that has a lot of really nice impact on the works is the different luminous sense types like, like for example, glowing or Cherenkov radiation, bioluminous sense, stuff like that. You can see the different results here. Go through the page, look at all that stuff. It is very, very amazing. Another thing that has amazing impact on the results and gives you really cool artworks is to name different films or shows or directors or artists that you know. For example, here you can see Akira, Attack on Titan, Cowboy Bebop, Death Note, all these kind of things. Play around with them and see what you can create with them. You can also combine them in one prompt and this will give you a very interesting combination of that. 
Another very important thing you need to know about is working with seeds. Now, what are they and how do you use them? To create a seed or find the seed of an image, what you want to do is to go to one of your upscales and right click on that. Then go to add reaction and then you want to go to other reactions and right here env and find the envelope. This envelope, not the other ones. Click on that and then you will get a message from Midjourney down here and you can see this shows you the seed number and the shop ID number. Now the important thing for us is the seed number. What we can do with this is we can basically use the creative inspiration from this image here and apply it to other images. So the way this works is after you have found that seed, you write a normal prompt with all the information in there. And then at the end of the prompt, you write minus minus seed space and then the seed number. Or the second version is to write minus minus same seed and then the number. Now, what is the difference between these two versions? When you only write seed, it will take a chunk of that seed for each of the four variations. While when you write same seed, it will use the same full seed for all of the variations. By the way, recently I have this error where the preview looks very blurry. This is when you have a lot of depth of field in your image, but you can see in the upscale render, there is a lot of detail that is sharp in here, but there's also a lot of bokeh in the foreground and in the background. Last but not least, here is something you can do that is a bit more expert, but it's a lot of fun to play with. And this is combining multiple prompts into one prompt. So the way you do this is you're using these square brackets here. So start with a square bracket, open it, and then write your prompt as you would. For example, here I have Goddess of the Lost, comma, full body, comma, silk, comma, gold, comma, ivory. Then I have a closing square bracket, a space, and then a plus, another space, and then you open the next square bracket and write, for example, lost city background, comma, soft bokeh, comma, eerie light, close the square bracket, then you have a space in there, and then I write minus, minus AR, space, then you have the ratio nine by 16, another space, minus, minus Q. I have to write in here quality, let's write two. And then another space in here, minus, minus S, another space. And this time I want to have a stylize of 5,000. So in this case, we have this prompt combined with this prompt. You can even use weights on them with your colon, colon, and then write, for example, five here. And then you have here colon, colon two. So we, now we have weighted this with these values, with these ratios of the weights. Personally, of course, I'm absolutely hooked by Midjourney AI because as a photographer, it gives me endless possibilities to create amazing scenes, combine them with real photos and create photo shoots that I could never have imagined otherwise. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye.